Hello everyone, Reza here and I would like to welcome you to my brand new XGen for beginner series. I've been getting a lot of requests lately about XGen which is the grooming solution here in Autodesk Maya and as a result of that obviously we are going to have an in-depth look at the principles, all the do's and don'ts, various tools that XGen offers to groom the character's hair or fur and uh, will hopefully end it on a high note where we put our knowledge into practice and create hair for our character. As usual, I hope you enjoy this series of tutorials and I hope you use them in your own projects. Let's start. This video is about scene preparation, which is extremely important. You know, the most common problems I see in students' scene is usually the X-Gen is not showing up, the scene is broken, they're getting a lot of errors and warnings, and sometimes Maya even crashes. So many of those problems stem from scene preparation phase and steps that some of the students don't do properly. So we are going to go through all of them and tick all the boxes and make sure that you have a solid understanding of what XGen needs and what XGen expects from us. And if you put those steps in place correctly, I can guarantee you that XGen works like a charm with no problem. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we're going to have a look at the XGen plugin and how to load that in your scene. So I'm going to go to Windows, Setting Preferences and Plugin Manager and just type in XGen. Now, this XGen toolkit needs to be ticked. So both of them, just tick them and you get this XGen shelf, which you do need if you wish to groom characters hair and you also get XGen this section. Now we have three general ways of creating XGen. So Autodesk has provided us with some samples via XGen library, generate XGen library. And if I click on that, you can see we have some presets and they're not gonna lie, fairly old presets. And since I remember we had them I wouldn't recommend it because at the end of the day, you're not going to use exactly those. You still need to have a solid understanding of how to change your XGen attributes. So I tend to create my own XGen guides and come up with my own version of hair or fur. So although this is available and you can always right click, import it and explore how to create those effects or types or hairstyles, I still wouldn't recommend them as final polish work. I'm going to close that. The next one is a relatively new interactive groom spline, which is a layer based workflow. And hopefully I'm going to put together a different set of tutorials on those because the way that you approach that is slightly different. Now, of course, the third method, which is still up to this date, is my preferred method, is to use XGen in a classic way, which is create XGen, and that brings up this menu right here. So we are going to um, talk about scalp workflow and do's and don'ts on that type of workflow. And in order to move forward with that and explore that, we need to have this window available to us. Now, before you even start adding anything into your scene, you need to make sure that you have a folder and you need to set project to that folder and ha have all the right folders or subfolders within your project directory. What do I mean by that? You can see that I have created a brand new folder with nothing in it. I'm just going to go to XGen project that I just created on my computer and I'm going to press set and create default workspace. 
So what's going to happen is Maya creates a workspace file, which is an environment file into this folder saying that, all right, from now on, look into this folder and link all the content. Maya 101, hopefully you already know this. Now we need some subfolders in here. It's easy. Once you set project, you can easily go to file, project window, and with the correct path and correct folder, you go accept. And what's gonna happen is Maya is going to create all the subfolders in here. Now you, you do need that because as soon as you start working with Xgen, Xgen is actually going to create another folder into the mix and calls it simply Xgen and puts all the maps and groom files and descriptions and collections into that folder. Now there is a very tight connection between these folders, especially scenes, source images and Xgen folder. And if you just drag and drop your Maya file into desktop with no set project step, next time you open Maya, your Groom or your Xgen file will disappear on you. So it is important to make sure that you have set project correctly. Now, in order to have something in the scene, and for you guys to follow along, I can easily go to Windows, General Editor, and Content Editor, bring this little basic head guy, right click on it and say, import. This is a very, very big geometry. I'm gonna close Content Editor, you can see how massive this object is. And I'm going to scale this, Control A to go to Channel Box, and scale this actually quite a fair bit. I don't know, maybe something around 0.18 should do the job. That's good. Now, probably it would be a good idea to place this on a base. This is by no mean a mandatory uh, step. I'm just going to dress the set really quick. Right click, go to edge. I'm just going to shift right click and bevel that edge and create a cylinder and just very, very quickly move that up like so. So we have something to start with. Of course, you can spend awful amount of time and, and basically jazz it up, but that's not really the whole idea in here. I just wanna make sure that we have some something to start with. So you can basically go in here, add details, but obviously we are not going to do that right now. So I'm just going to dial this back. Good. So basically every time you have a model in the scene, you can see I already um, have some transformation, some uh, history stack building up, scale value, translation value. This object is not probably named the way that I want. So all of these things you need to take care of before you assign your Xgen to your geometry. So if you would like to change the topology, if you would like to change the UVs, if you would like to make any changes in your scene, do it now before you start Xgen. Another thing that you need to be mindful of is the character should face in positive Z and for X axis, the character should be at the center. We don't care about the Y axis. So it can be here, it can be here, it can be here. But for X axis, it needs to be at the center. The reason that I'm um, really kind of emphasizing on X and Z is because later on when we place some grooms or any modification and if there is any mirroring needed and there are some tools in here for example mirror selected guys across the x-axis Maya is not going to look at the object x-axis it's going to look at the world x-axis and again your action is not going to work properly if you don't have the character in the right position the next hint is to make sure that everything is cleaned up, including your translation values. So 
I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go to edit, delete by type and history. So there is no history stack. And then I'm going to select all of them again. I'm going to go to modify freeze transformation. I can take a peek at the option box, make sure translate, rotate and scale are selected. I'm going to go to freeze transform. Now, extremely important to, though, to make sure those steps are done correctly. Otherwise, if you change anything, then your scene will fall apart. I'm going to rename this to character or maybe care. Select these two. I'm going to press G, call this base and put that on a display layer. So put this on a display layer, call this base underscore layer. I'm going to also put the character on a display layer. So I'm going to name it character layer and save. And this is good when you try to focus on the scalp only and not to select your model. You can always go to template or reference so the character is locked and you're not going to select it by accident. Now, one last step that we're going to go through is to actually separate the scalp in here. I tend not to put my grooms on the character directly, but I would rather have the scalp separated as a separate object and leave the character untouched. Especially in production, you may have um, skin information, you know, influences, constraints, a lot of things, even geometry bind applied to your character and you really don't want extra level of information on the same geometry makes the whole workflow a lot cleaner and especially if you have UDIMs, um, individual UV tiles on your character, XGen does not understand UDIMs. So it's really good idea to separate the scalp so you can UV unwrap it separately and put that into zero to one ratio in your UV texture editor to make sure that everything is recognizable by XGen. So as you can see, there are a few things here and there that you need to remember before you commit to any XGen work here in Autodesk Maya. I'm going to switch to side. I can probably duplicate the character and I'm going to call it scalp. Press control G on it and call this XGen underscore geo. And the reason I do that is because you may have mustache, you may have eyebrows, you may have different parts of the geometry as a separate collection or description. So it is a good idea to have a folder. And if you would like to move, rotate, you are going to actually apply that to the folder. Now I am going to reference the character itself, go to scalp, right click on my display layer and say, remove selected object. With that, I'm just going to keep the main geometry locked, but the scalp is ready for editing. Now I just would like to keep the scalp and remove the rest and I will apply the action to that uh, scalp. So the way that I work with this is I tend to take more so I'm not going to aim for hairline and try to kind of extract that. I take as much as I possibly can. So holding control shift to add to my selection. I'm going to very quickly select few faces, the one that I know I don't need. Very quickly. All right, that should do for now. You can see this is pretty um, loose. So I, I tried not to, apart from the hairline here, I try to be quite generous with the amount of space that I'm using because at the end of the day, I am not going to use all of it. I'm just going to use just maps to 
customize the hairline. Now, one last thing before we move on to the next chapter is to actually check the UVs because it is quite important. So I'm going to go to UV Texture Editor and I have two shells, we preferably would like to have only one. So what I can do is to go to UV and then Planar, Option Box, I would like to project from the Y axis, keep image width height ratio on, project, and then if I go back, you can see that everything is within zero to one as one shell. Right click, UV shell, shift right click, unfold, unfold, and that unfolds everything correctly. I can actually press R on the keyboard and very quickly scale this to the right position. I'm going to rotate it like so. Sometimes this orient doesn't work as you can see, but it doesn't really matter. You don't need to have this completely separate. What you need to check though, is to make sure that it's between zero to one in just one UV patch. And that is what is pretty important. Now, once that's done, I can actually give this another material. Scalp Lambert. And I'm going to make this just a tad bigger. So something like that. I'm gonna bring the character back and you can see, probably I can go actually slightly lower, yeah. That kind of works. You don't want to go too big. Uh, you don't want to increase the size of the scalp too much. Otherwise, you have to do shrink wrap to really, truly place this guy on this character. But for now, it works. Remember those steps. We have history stack and we have translation. So I'm going to go to uh, edit, delete by type, history, and modify freeze transform. Perfect. Now we are ready to start with action. 